If you want to integrate QuickBooks with almost any tool, or you want to automate processes, including AI workflows, then Anytan is a great way to do that without any code. So I will show you how to do it from the absolute basics going towards more advanced topics by the end of this video. So what I will cover today, first I will show you how to set up our environment, including our testing sandbox company. Then I will show you how to extract the data from QuickBooks, automate some reporting, then the opposite to automate creating records coming from an external system. Then I will show how to set up a quick, uh, simple AI agent that we can use to actually ask uh, plain English questions about our QuickBooks data. Then also how to um, make this work as an MCP server. And then finally, how to get our app approved and ready for production use with real company accounts. So first we need to create our developer account on developer.intuit.com where we just have to register and then we have to create our app which is required for any API access. So we can go to the app dashboard and create our app. We have to give it a name which can be anything. Then we have to choose the permissions which I will choose both for simplicity and once we've done that we will already receive our credentials, client ID and client secret that we can then use in Anatan to start setting up workflows. So then we can go to our Anatan account, which can be self-hosted, can be cloud. I'm showing with cloud. We have to add the new credential and choose QuickBooks. A credential type, then we get a redirect URL, which can be different if we're self-hosting, but this it's always the same for cloud. And then we have to go back to the developer dashboard and in the settings add under redirect URIs, save it to make sure that uh, our developer account registered this Anatan as callback URI. Then we can go back to keys and credentials and copy our client ID and client secret back to the Anatan side. Then choose our environment to be sandbox for testing, not production for now. And then we can actually go ahead to connect the account. And once that's done, we should see a success message saying that it was successful. And now we are all set up and connected. So now I will show you how to set up exporting data out of QuickBooks. Specifically, I will set up this monthly report, which will always add new rows with the current balance of our customers. And it will run every month automatically from an 8N. So let's start making a new workflow from zero. We can add the new node and choose the QuickBooks online in the option. We can find that with tab or clicking on the new node. And there are so many opportunities uh, or actions that we can do with this node. And for this, we will use the get many customers, which does what the name implies. It We can use it to get many customers. And here we can also uh, look at that the resource as well as the operation can be changed. Uh, if we want a different one, I will be using return all to make our life simple because we don't have that many customers. So we can work with all of them at the same time. And uh, here we are getting 29 items. We can test it. This is very nice about Anatan that we can test each node step by step. We just click on the execute step and we can really see what is the output that it brings us. So here we can review everything in the table view. Also, Jason, if we are comfortable with that, we have to remember to always click the save button because it does not auto save in most cases. And then we can add the edit field node, which we can use to actually pull the data that we need from this table of, of so many data. So we can use the table views columns to actually drag it into this edit field and we can go through what are each of the columns that we want. So here I will be using the ID 
which is necessary for later API calls and balance and an email address, which I will rename to make it clearer. And now the last thing that I want to add is uh, the date for which we can use an expression. So if we add these columns each month to the Google Sheets, then we want a month column to, to make sure that we can uh, keep them in the same uh, table and be usable for reporting. So I added this period, which is basically the year and the month, and that one is a formula. We can usually use ChatGPT to generate these formulas, otherwise they are in JavaScript if we're familiar with that. And then finally, we can just uh, push this into Google Sheets with the append row in sheet action. And I really like to use the URL for simplicity, so I will just get our output Google Sheet uh, URL into both the document and the sheet field, we can use map automatically and make sure that we have uh, insert new columns if uh, the current column is missing. So this is going to auto create all of our columns for us. So we don't have to do that in the Google sheet. And now we can actually see that, that this was uh, all exported. We can see that uh, exactly what was in QuickBooks, what our Nathan node got, was actually moved into this Google Sheet. And because we want to run it each month, we have to choose a different trigger. So I will just go to triggers and choose the on schedule trigger. And we can set up when exactly to run. So each uh, first day of the month, I will set this up and actually connect it to the rest of our workflow. So it is going to automatically run once a month. We have to make sure to toggle the active on for this to work. So now let's see when we want to add uh, or create some records within QuickBooks from an external system which I am also using Google Sheets for, uh, but it can be any other system if, we, if it has a node or API, um, or if it has a native Google Sheets export, then we can also uh, use that as a middle layer. And so here I'm going to be using the get rows in sheet action from Google Sheets and you do the same as before that I'm adding the URL of the document and we can check uh, what's returned with the execute step. We can see that uh, we got uh, that data that we put in the Google Sheet. And now what we need to do is again use the QuickBooks node to uh, create a record. In our case, this will be an invoice. And we have to choose the expression for the customer ID if we want to set it dynamically from uh, the input data. And we can get the customer ID if we first make an export. And we have to add a bunch of uh, different data points to for, for our item to be valid, like we have to add the uh, detail type and item name. But here now I'm going to keep most of this constant. Um, so we're assuming that we're only changing the amount and the description, and we're always invoicing the same service, which is believable for, for some use cases. And we will uh, just be using a pre-made design product and a quantity of one, and then the amount and description comes from the sheet. And we can again test this particular step by clicking on execute step and see what it returns. Um, it's going to add quite a bunch of data or return quite a bunch of data. For example, uh, the ID of our invoice, which we want, we can then save back to the original source. So we have a reference point. But here I'm just going to make sure that it actually happened, it did what we told it to, so we can go to sales invoices in QuickBooks and see that it uh, 
was actually created with those customers and amounts as we expected. And the date is uh, by default today and the due is by default 30 days. So now we can actually go on to build our own AI agent that is going to chat with our QuickBooks data. But first, let me also mention that we have prepared a long Notion document, which includes all of the guides for what we have built today and all of the templates that you can just copy paste to your NA10 and use and some other tips and extra templates as well that did not make into this video. So if you want to dive deeper into the topic, make sure to grab that in the first link in the description. It's completely free. And now we can build our first AI agent with QuickBooks data. So to see how it will work, we can ask a question from it uh, with customer data, and then it's going to answer with that nicely formatted that it pulls from the QuickBooks database. So now let's build our AI chat agent. For this, we have to choose the AI agent node, which is really a connection of nodes because it adds us a chat trigger. So it's going to get the first message of the chat and it will pass it onto the AI agent, which is also a collection of things because it needs a chat model for which we can use the OpenAI node if we have already authenticated, which we can do create new credential. Um, then we can choose which model we want to use. Mini and nano models are going to be perfect for this use case and are going to consume much less than a full model would. And then into the tools, which is um, the tools that the LNM can call, we can add our QuickBooks tool and we can use the customer get uh, operation. We can set the tool description to automatic. So it's going to understand what it is about. And I'm going to set it to return all for now. So the entire database when the agent asks will be available to it in a single prompt because we don't have too many customers to do that. And now we can uh, do run a quick test with this uh, test uh, environment that we can get clicking on chat. So we can ask simple questions and we can debug exactly what's happen what happens under the hood that it called the tool uh, and what the tool has returned for it. And we have to set it to active to have a shareable URL which I'm going to do here. And then we can actually get a link uh, if we set it to publicly available that anyone can use to, to chat with this model. So we can share it with our coworkers and they are able to ask questions to talk to this AI agent that has a connection to the customer database in this case. So it can pull the email addresses, phone numbers, balances, all that from QuickBooks and we can do the same with, with invoices or whatever else we want to do with, with a different operation. Now, if we want to turn this into an MCP that we can directly add to our ChatGPT or Claude, um, we have to get an MCP server trigger, which is going to allow us to set up um, an MCP server. We are not setting up authentication in sensitive data. It would be highly advisable, of course. And basically what we can do, whether we have one tool or multiple tools, we can uh, disconnect the tool from our AI agent and add it to an MCP server. So the MCP server will act as a collection of the tools that then an AI agent can actually call via this MCP client tool. So we can uh, basically create collections of tools and add that to the AI agent uh, using the authentication and URL of, uh, of, of our MCP server trigger. And the same um, URL we can use to define our MCP server for tools like Claude or uh, Cursor or or ChatGPT, so these are can be added to pretty much any LLM that we're using. We can test that this works the same way, and it uh, it calls the MCP server instead of uh, calling the tool directly. And we can verify that it it has the same functionality as it had before.
So if you got this far and maybe you have already built a couple of workflows for QuickBooks, whether it is for your internal purposes or for clients, you probably want to go out of the sandbox and use it with real organization data. And to do this, we have to get our app approved. We have to go back to the Intuit developer dashboard, developer.intuit.com and go to this get production keys from right the main screen where we basically have to fill out two forms. First, this app details and then about compliance. From what I've seen, if you take some time to actually respond to everything properly and also provide an agreement and privacy policy URL, then it would generally take a couple of days for them to approve. It might need one or two rounds if something they, they don't accept at first. So make sure to, to allocate some time for this. And then once you got approved, once your app got approved, you will actually get the production credentials, client ID and client secret here that you can go back to any time, set up the new uh, credential and that one you can then uh, authenticate with an actual production account in uh, an organization using QuickBooks. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it useful and want to dive deeper into the topic, make sure to check out the Notion document that is the supplementary um, material for this video with all of the templates. It's available for free and also if you want to not miss out on similar automation builds and tutorials, then uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell and see you in the next video.